वाकबंद घेतो गो बुशर्टला वाकबंद घेतो बुशर्टला वाकबंद घेतो अक्षराला विंचा कमाल बघा रिंगला फोन दाखवतोय त्याचा वाटता की मी घेतला तरी भेटला नाही का गुरु शर्ट आता तुम्हाला तो रिंग रिंगला फोन दाखवतोय आणि हे बघा रिंग आता रिंगचा चमत्कार बघा This is an expensive operation. Four salesmen, a rented elephant, a hired band. Hindustan Lever has 2,000 teams like this washing their way through Indian villages every day. And their routes are planned by a very large computer program. Why? Is Raju's shirt really that dirty? What is happening is what has happened in Europe or in North America. That for most product categories, the increase in usage is in a way linked to the increase in population. You can't get a growth of 10% in toothpaste in North America. Uh, in fact, I think it might go down with people losing their teeth faster than they used to. But in India, to expand, to get more volumes, you have to go into a market that's totally untapped. Rural India has about 600 million people. That's a lot of people. Now, even if 5% of them use it, that would be at the size of the population of Canada or bigger than the population of Canada. There is gold in them hills, as they used to say. You've got to look for it. When Punjivan was a boy learning pottery from his father, Ashagad was a three-day trip from Bombay. Now it's only a four-hour drive. And Punjivan's son Raju has figured out that there won't be much demand for cheap handmade pottery here 20 years from now. Raju drives an auto rickshaw for a living. Kunjivan's youngest brother, Amrit, has also broken away from the traditions of his caste. And he's never regretted it. He has a couple of sewing machines and two employees, and he makes at least twice as much as Punjivan. क्योंकि मेहनत भी बहुत तीन चार बजे उठना पड़ता है कि मैं चार बजे उठेगा तो सब काम होता है Punjivan is 18 years older than his brother and when he was a young man caste was destiny in a village like Ashagad but he'd probably change jobs too if he were younger. The brothers live side by side on the same piece of rented land, but their lives are a century apart. Punjivan's house has two light bulbs. Amrit's house has a radio and a blender and a fan and a television. <laughs> एक साल वो टीवी लेके आए हैं। उसका हम बोलने का कि सब घर पे, दूसरे के घर पे टीवी है, देखना, उधर जाना भी अच्छा नहीं। मतलब वो लोग का भी टाइम पास होता है। मैं बोला चलो ना सोचेंगे तो वो लोग को घर के बच्चे भी देखेगा तो वो लोग को भी जरा ये तो होएगा ना कि क्या चल रहा है बाहर। Life takes on new meanings when you put it on television. Even the tea you drink becomes a lifestyle choice. Television has existed in India, I think, since the 1960s, but only in the city of Delhi and a very small number of sets. Then came the Asian Games. I 
think it was in 84, the government decided that you would be allowed to import sets if you had relatives. And there isn't an Indian who doesn't have a relative abroad. And those few don't can always manufacture a relative. Indians are very good at manufacturing everything except goods. They're very good at manufacturing relatives. So you got him to send you a set. And there were times when aircraft, I'm not joking, could not land at Bombay Airport because the tarmac was full of television sets. Sony was sold out in Dubai and in Hong Kong. You couldn't get them. That is the air start of the television age. Televisions are really becoming perhaps the most important status and you know, lifestyle need that the consumer today has in the country. Should the new Anita be banned just to stop the fresh wave of envy? Should it be banned just because it's so advanced? You decide. Ah! Onida, neighbor's envy, owner's pride. Bombay is India's New York. 13 million people already, and it's growing by 2,000 more every day. People will try anything that seems to improve their lives. They'll even leave their villages and everything they know behind and move to the city. These water pipes are a lifeline for the millions of people in Bombay who already have a decent place to live. They also serve some of the millions who don't. This squatter settlement is here because the people can tap plenty of fresh water out of the pipes. You'll find similar scenes all over the third world. In Cairo, in Mexico City, in Jakarta. People flock to the cities in the hope of entering consumer heaven. Many of them will in the end, or at least their children will. But first they have to spend their time in hell. The new Bombay Stock Exchange was built for the boom that came with the opening of the economy. The traders touched the step for good luck on their way into the Stock Exchange, as people once touched the step of the temple. But now the religion has changed. Money is very important in this temple, but the real idol is growth itself. It has so many worshippers that they spill over into the street below. Outside the stock exchange, dealers sell stocks to ordinary Indians who want a piece of the action. There's already been one big scam, and of course, it was mostly the small investors who got burned. <laughs> Foreign investment is pouring into India. General Electric, BMW, Honda, IBM, Kellogg, everybody's coming. And that's forcing Indian business to get more competitive, too. Globalization makes everybody move faster. The traders deal as if there were no tomorrow. And for some of them, unfortunately, there won't be a tomorrow. Three floors down, a bomb takes patiently away. is in the free market trinity. Production, distribution, and marketing. 
The particular job of advertising is to glamorize consumption. People in the ad trade are usually pretty good at glamorizing themselves, too. And the other winner, Enterprise Advertising Private Limited, product Indo Biotech Foods Limited, created by Mohammad Khan. <laughs> Enterprise, good morning. Yes. Yes, just a moment, please. Bombay has some of the most expensive real estate in the world. Space is at a premium around here. Um, we have our account management section on this side. We have creative around that side. And I sit over there. Mohammed Khan got his start selling vacuum cleaners in London. Now he's the managing director of Enterprise Advertising. His firm concentrates on Bombay's affluent and upwardly mobile consumers. One of the most significant changes that we are seeing is in the attitude of women in this country. Um, in the old days, women didn't, uh, or rather women had this feeling of guilt about spending money on themselves. Um, so if they wanted to buy something, it had to be for the family rather than for her own personal use. Uh, today that has changed. For instance, we have launched this new brand um, called Maximum Overnight Cream. It's an expensive product. But this is a very, very successful launch. This guilt has gone. You know, women don't mind going and spending money on a product which is for their own exclusive use in the home. The point that I want to make is that the Indian urban person is as sophisticated and as savvy as anybody anywhere in the world. The old cultural barriers are falling fast. Traditionally, people don't even kiss on screen in Indian movies. But now, TV has condom commercials that don't even mention birth control. And when they can shoot commercials to this standard in Bombay, how long will they go on shooting them in high-wage places like Hamburg and New York? The global economy really does mean global competition. MRF Sigma Steel, the space age war. I mean, it's really incredible. In, in my lifetime, and I joined advertising in the late 50s, I was from the theatre, you see. I, I trained at RADA, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London, and thought, you know, I'd start a theatre and so on, but it didn't pay money. So I needed, you know, to keep body and soul together. So I joined this, uh, you know, lucrative... I sold my soul for money. In a way, I, I'm not unhappy about it because I've learned a lot from it. Uh, communications, what makes people tick, how do they respond to certain stimuli and so on. Levers in India, Hindustan lever, had done some research for a new soap. The questions I asked the research people to find out was, what does the middle class housewife do in the bathroom? And it was very interesting. From the morning when she gets up to the time she goes to bed, she has no private time. The only time she has private time is when she locks that bathroom door and is by herself because she's working for her mother-in-law and her children and her husband and, you know, she's really a workhorse. It's a, it's a life of great drudgery. And we found out that when she locks that bathroom door, she begins to hum to herself, usually uh, a snatches from the latest Hindi film song. And then we probe further, and it seems that she daydreams. What does she daydream? She daydreams that she's escaping from this life of drudgery. And Amitabh Bachchan, who's the great hero, you know, the Clark Gable of his generation, comes on a white horse and he carries her off and they go off into the sunset. That sort of daydreaming. Now, obviously, she was looking for something of an escape. And my instincts told me that if we could gear a soap around an escape, that the bath was an escape into a fantasy world, we might get something. And I had this fantasy of my own anyway since I think I was in school or college.